The small kingdom of Camelard, a historical ally of the Pendragon family, was in trouble. King Leodegrance had no male heir. Thus, whoever married his daughter Guinevere would be heir to the title of Camelard. Welsh nobles and the Duke of Northumbria had an interest in a union between Lady Guinevere and the Duke to consolidate the power of this coalition in the region. With the support of King Reince, the Duke of Northumbria gave the king an ultimatum. Either he delivered his daughter, or the fortress would be reduced to dust, and his subjects would be sold into slavery. Leodegrance prayed to the heavens, for his few soldiers could hardly contain an assault on the fortress. His only hope was the distress call sent to King Arthur. The King of the Britons and his men marched quickly to Camelard, for Arthur would never deny helping an ally in a time of need. The coalition of Leodegrance's enemies was surprised by the arrival of Arthur and his men. The northern enemies proved to be valiant, but unable to hold back the royal army and its incredible knights. After easily defeating the first wave of enemies, King Arthur wanted to negotiate. I know that your men are sons of the same land that gave birth to my soldiers, and that the sons of Brittany do not run away from the fight when it is necessary. But there is no need to stain the sacred soil of Brittany with the blood of hundreds of your sons. The champions of both can fight in a singular duel to reveal the true will of God. The Duke was pleased with that proposal, for he was an experienced warrior and the northern champion in jousting, and he accepted the duel readily. The Princess of Camelard beckoned to her champion, asking him to come forward. As Arthur approached the young lady, he recognized her beautiful features. How could he forget the beautiful features of the young lady who had saved his life days ago? Guinevere tied her handkerchief to the tip of Arthur's spear and wished him good luck for the clash. The two knights took up their positions and spurred their horses toward each other. A great bang was heard as the two spears collided. Due to the heavy impact, the Duke fell from his saddle and crashed terribly against the ground. Arthur got down from his horse and knelt beside the Duke, who was giving his last breaths while choking on his own blood in his throat. The King raised Guinevere's handkerchief, announcing his victory against the enemy, and the invading armies turned around and returned home. Arthur apologized for returning the princess her handkerchief in a sorry state, but thanked her for the good fortune of her talisman. King Leodegrance did not hold back and gave his savior a strong hug and promised to give him any reward he wished. I apologize in advance for what my heart most longs for is the same thing those rude villains wanted, the hand of the most beautiful princess this land has ever seen. Not since the times of the great warriors like Achilles has there been a woman capable of winning so many hearts, and with the potential to generate so much discord. And so, as proposed in Homer's book, there is no better man than his majesty to marry our Helen of Brittany. After all, no man will revolt against you in search of the love of Guinevere, your future queen. After promising his daughter to King Arthur, a splendid surprise was around the corner. Do you know what that is? A table? Yes, but not just any table. This table symbolizes a dream your father had. Around this table will sit the best knights of this kingdom, and under the command of the king, they will try to lead the kingdom of Brittany into an age of gold, where justice, kindness, and peace will prevail. Arthur marveled at his late father's dream, and even vowed that he would make that dream a reality. Arthur said goodbye to his bride and future father-in-law, saying that he would meet them again at his new castle next summer, where the royal wedding would be celebrated. Summer had finally arrived, after decades of hard work. 
the citadel of Camelot was finally built. The splendor of that city was like a beacon for all Brittany, a symbol of honor, justice, and compassion. The men of Brittany would achieve unimaginable things. That was undoubtedly a rare jewel in a world covered by darkness and corruption. The city was crowded. For that day, the long-awaited marriage between King Arthur and Princess Guinevere of Camelard would be celebrated. Seeing his future queen enter the church, Arthur had no doubt that he had married the most beautiful woman in the world. All the guests were delighted to see the bride in the bridal pageant. Except Merlin, who sensed that such a beautiful bride could ruin the kingdom. The couple made their vows in front of the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Kingdom of Brittany was left with a new queen. Arthur's subjects thrilled at their beautiful new queen, and they pronounced good wishes to the royal couple, wishing them health and that an heir to the throne of Brittany. It was a weekend full of celebrations, with parties in the streets, palace banquets, and tournaments. That same weekend, Arthur appointed the knights who would sit on the round table. Among them were his father-in-law, Leodegrance, his marshal, Sir Ulfius, his brood brother, Sir Kay, his nephew and bridal tournament champion, Sir Gawain, and many other distinguished knights. At this headless table, they would sit as equals and swear to be right in their actions, just and brave in times of war or peace. They were to be an example to other knights and to common men. These men would ride all over the island of Brittany, taking on evildoers, protecting the defenseless, and bringing justice to those lands. Their important conquests were a source of glory, and the golden age of those people, promised by the king, seemed to be near. The greatest desire of any knight in that land was, through his courageous deeds, to become a knight of the round table, sitting at the side of Arthur and his magnificent warriors. After the order of the Knights of the Round Table was formed, it took a few years before a knight emerged who was different from the rest. His name was Lancelot, and his arrival would forever change the fate of Arthur's kingdom.